the infamous Vermont loophole is now officially closed, leaving tens of thousands of chopper builders without a way to obtain a title for their next chopper project. But is there still a way to get your hands on a title for that bike in the modern era? The answer is yes. It's gonna cost you a little bit of money, but I'm gonna to explain to you how to do it. I'm Grease, you're watching Grease's Garage, and I'm gonna help you skip the struggle. Like I mentioned in the introduction, getting this title for your bike will cost you a couple hundred bucks. So before we talk about the process of getting that title, let's talk about whether or not you personally actually need a title for your motorcycle. Because my state of New Hampshire, like many other states, do not require a title for motorcycles that are older than 20 years. Some states, it's 25 years old, every state gets to make this determination for itself. So the first step in your journey should be to look up your particular state and the age of your bike to determine whether you need to spend this money. Because if you don't, there's no need to bother with a title and you can spend that money on the build. On that note, everything we're gonna talk about in today's video applies to motorcycles that are at least 20 years old. So if your bike is newer than that, this solution is not going to help you. But the reason I'm making this video is because I run a specific chopper motorcycle channel. So most people watching my channel are riding bikes that are over 20 years old. So for the vast majority of you, all of this stuff is going to apply and this is going to get you that title that you need. All right, so let's assume you live in a state that requires you to have a title and you don't have that title yet. The way to approach this problem in the modern era is to use what's called a title service company. Like I mentioned a moment ago, my state does not require a title, so I was very unfamiliar with what a title service company is and what they actually do. But the chopper community is a very tight knit community and I was referred by at least five different people to one specific title service company to ask these questions and that is Joe over at Saints Engine. Now this is not an advertisement for Joe or for Saints Engine. I have no business relationship. I get no commissions or kickbacks from this company and they of course have competitors. So you're free to shop at whichever one you want but what I do appreciate is I had questions about the process in putting this video together for you, and Joe over at Saints spent two hours on the phone with me explaining every single step so that I could put this video together, and I have never even given Joe a dime. So I super appreciate him being willing to share all of that with me for your benefit. I'll put a link to his website down below. He is one person that you could use if you're looking to get a title for your vehicle. Now the actual process itself is super streamlined and very straightforward. All it costs is 400 bucks and a picture of your VIN number. That really is about all that's required. And essentially what's happening here is that company is taking ownership of the vehicle, applying for and obtaining a title, and then that title gets sent to you to then fill out the information on the back as the buyer and transfer it into your name. This is particularly helpful for people like myself. When I used to live in Massachusetts, I was building a 76 XS 650 that I bought with nothing but a bill of sale. And as far as I was aware at that time, there was no way for me to obtain that title through the state of Massachusetts. So if you find yourself in that situation, a title service company will take that burden from you in exchange for 400 bucks. And if that's the only way that you can get the title, that's what you gotta do. So that's how the process works. And for those of you that are wondering, you know, what is the answer to the question, how do I get a title for my project? There's your answer. Feel free to click off the video. But there are a lot of other people that have more specific questions, the kind I get in my private messages and on the comments for my videos. So I'm gonna dive into those questions now. All right, so the number one question I get outside of how to obtain a title is how do I know if this vehicle is stolen or not? This, it is much more rare than you would think uh, for a vehicle to come back stolen, but there is a good way to check and a bad way to check. So in order to explain this to you, we have to talk about two different acronyms. The first one is NCIC. This is the National Crime Information Center. And then on the other hand, we have what's called NVIDIS, which is the National Motor Vehicle Title Information System. So let's start with the what not to do. What you will often hear people say is when they're purchasing a bike without a title, they say, oh, I'll have a local cop run the VIN number and tell me if it comes back stolen. 
What that cop is going to do is run that VIN number through what's called NCIC to essentially check whether that vehicle has been reported as stolen. What you'll often see is these NCIC memberships come in different tiers, different levels. In a small town police department typically doesn't have the highest level of membership that would be required to communicate with all 50 states about stolen property. So what you're really getting is a local cop doing a local check to see if someone in the more immediate area reported that bike is stolen. It's better than no information, but it's not the final say. So now let's talk about Invitas. Invitas, like I said, is the National Motor Vehicle Title Information System. Invitas is the be all end all when it comes to determining who really owns a particular VIN number. You do not wanna rely on stolen property reports as a indicator that a particular VIN is owned by a particular person. Invitas is a 50 state system. This is the national database for who owns that VIN. So what should you do? What you should do is do a Google search for a VIN lookup that is linked specifically to that acronym. I'm putting it right here again in case you forgot it already, even though I've said it like five times. You want to find a VIN lookup that is linked to Invitas. If it doesn't say Invitas, it is not a proper check. Those online VIN lookups will cost a couple of bucks. I think it's like 20 bucks or less, but if they are running it through that system and it is not coming back as being linked to anyone other than the person that you purchased it from, then you know that that clean VIN number is owned by that person and can be transferred to you and there's not going to be what's known as a title dispute. Now for most bikes, this is a pretty cut and dry situation, but there is one enormous glaring exception and it is favored by pretty much everyone in this community of chopper builders. And that takes us into our next most commonly asked question, which is the cone shovel conundrum. The reason that this is a problem is because on the cone shovel specifically, which I love, if you're watching this, I'm sure you love it, the cone shovel had this error, if you want to call it that. It's not really Harley's fault because Harley didn't know what people were going to do or how this was going to play out, but they stamped a VIN on the motor itself and also on the frame. Now, prior to this, Harley would only stamp the VIN number on the motor, which is fine, but once they started putting this VIN in two places, there became a big issue. And I'm gonna illustrate this to you with a quick example. Let's say I owned a cone shovel, matching motor and frame VIN numbers, and then one day I'm riding it like an idiot and I blow up that motor. I yank that motor out of the frame, I buy an s, &S motor, and I stick it back in there, and now I'm back to shoveling riding on that same title I had with that same VIN number that's on my frame. Now I take that motor and I sell that motor to a machine shop and that machine shop rebuilds the motor and then they sell that motor to another chopper builder. He takes it, he plops it in an aftermarket Paco frame and thinking, oh, I'm gonna be smart. I don't wanna register this as a special construction vehicle off of this Paco frame. I'll instead just register it off the VIN that's on the motor. Now we find ourselves in the title dispute realm. He goes with my VIN, registers it with his state, and Vetus gets that report and issues him the title with that VIN number because a local cop in his area, you know, did a VIN verification form and checked out that motor and said, yep, okay, I, I verify that this VIN belongs to you and is on this bike. Now when I go back to title or re-register my motorcycle, I get a notification that someone else already has that title. This is a big problem. And this dispute going back and forth between me and the guy who bought this motor can rage on from state to state. So even though I might be in New Hampshire and he might be in Pennsylvania, it doesn't matter. And Vetus says there can only be one person to own this VIN number and it's the last person to register it who owns that VIN. So we're gonna keep knocking each other off of that registration and just battling it out back and forth. This is a problem you don't wanna find yourself in. So my advice to you is to remember two things. One, that the frame is king and the motor is queen. But also to remember that when the king and queen are together under one household, you have a happy home and a clean 
VIN and title situation. So while the frame might be better than the motor, don't forget that that motor can still cause you problems from a distance. Just because you have the frame doesn't mean you have the whole package. You want the king and queen together. That is my recommendation if you're buying a cone shovel specifically, is to avoid that conundrum, just get both or leave it alone. This next section I am calling, you only have a title if, because there are a couple situations in which you might think you have a title, but you actually don't. So let's talk about it. When do you absolutely have a title? You have a title if it is from your state, in your name, and you are holding that piece of paper in your hands. That's when you know you have the title, the job is done, it belongs to you. You almost have a title if the person you're buying the bike from has their name on the front as the owner on that title, and there is no information on the back except for your name, which you are about to write down as the buyer, and then take that paper to your DMV and get that title transferred to your name. So if their name's on the front and nothing's on the back, you almost have a title. When do you not have a title? If the person you are buying the bike from has their name on the back as the buyer, and the person they bought it from is on the front as the seller or the owner of the title, then you do not have a title. There is nothing you can do with that piece of paper. I have been in this situation, been trying to buy a bike from someone, and he said, oh yeah, well, I'm on the back as the buyer, so like this is, you know, I'll just give you this piece of paper, your DMV will take that. No, they will not take that. The owner of that bike is the guy on the front, and you don't know that guy, and that guy ain't gonna help you, trust me. So if somebody tries to give you a title in that manner where they're on the back, do not accept it. That person has to go to the DMV, transfer the title to themselves, get their name on the front and your name on the back. Don't fall for that one. It's an easy mistake to make. Next, you do not have a title if there are any crossouts at all on that title information. If, if you're writing your name on the back and you mess it up somehow, you can't spell your own name and you cross it out and then you write it again, invalid. No cross outs accepted. If you don't believe me, try to take it to the DMV, waste half your day and they will let you know instead. So make sure there are no errors, no issues with that title. And then lastly, when it comes to getting a bike, even if it comes with a title, you would be a fool not to get a bill of sale in addition to that title. One other note on this, even if you use somebody like Saints Engine, a title service company, always check the box to get a bill of sale with that title that he'll be sending you. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it's always a good idea to get that bill of sale because some states can just be a pain and not having a bill of sale can be the reason why you don't end up getting the title you were supposed to get. Even though you did the hard part already and got the title, Get the bill of sale every single time. If you need to know what to go on that bill of sale, it can be a handwritten piece of paper, but put your name, the buyer's name, the purchase price of the vehicle, absolutely, absolutely, the VIN number of the vehicle needs to be on that form and get the odometer reading. Even if there is no odometer on the bike, just get something down on the paperwork because that's the common things that the DMV is gonna ask for, they need to have that information. Save yourself the headache. Bill of sale, proper title, and if you don't have a title, you can get one in the modern age by using a title service company. I hope this video helps you to understand the whole process. If you have more questions, feel free to comment them down below or to reach out to Joe directly. He told me he's happy to talk to anybody who wants to call him and has questions about obtaining a title for their project. Hope this helps, guys. Thanks for watching Grease's Garage, and I will catch you next week.